so we should be connecting to YouTube. It's going to be live streamed. Yay, YouTube. It's Clear Vision Wednesday time. I'm your host, Claudia Mühlenweg. I'm a natural eyesight improvement teacher and the creator of the Naturally Clear Vision Method. And like most Wednesdays, I have a super cool guest here today. And she's a fellow vision teacher. And she's also, she's, you can read in the bio, she, in the show notes, there's so many credentials that she has. She's an EFT practitioner. She oh. is, a, and she's a musician. She's a fabulous musician and is also trained in meridian tapping and reconnective healing. She is a natural vision te improvement teacher like me, and she's a holistic cancer coach and also trained by Mary Morrissey in the dream builder as a dream builder life coach. So I want to welcome Carla Siaki. I was waiting to say her name. You might say ski but I know it's Siaki. So welcome to the show, Carla. Thank you, Claudia. So lovely to see you all the way yeah. across the ocean. Yeah, I'm in Germany right now. I'm visiting my, my family here. So our talk today, or the, the title of the head that we came up with together is a little tongue in cheek. The root cause of bad eyesight is not what you think, or is it? <laughs> So obviously that's a little bit of a clever headline. I hope you guys enjoy it. So tell us a little bit, Carla, about like, why are you doing what you're doing? Like, what's your story? How did you end up doing this work? Well, I first got into this work. I mean, my way back history is that growing up, there was a book by Dr. Bates on my parents' bookshelf. Oh. And um, I, I'm sure my maternal grandmother bought it for my mother or my father. And um, and I would pick it up and I would try to read it once I started wearing glasses at age 10. And I, his language was so old to me and formal that I couldn't understand what he was saying. So I would just put it back on the shelf. Um, so that was in there, Dr. Bates, you know. And then um, fast forward, my last really strong glasses prescription was I think 2005, four or five. And I put the glasses on and I thought, this is wrong. And just a few weeks later, I heard about a, a class through um, Joseph Marcola, actually, uh, on natural vision improvement taught by Thomas Quackenbush. And um, I signed up for the class and my vision dramatically improved and also changed like the quality of how I could see changed. And it didn't improve all the way to 2020. Uh, so I knew I was still on the journey. But once I was caught by that bug, I really started being able to say for a fact that we can do things that we that we don't think we can. We can change things that it isn't in the in the regular uh, information system out there, you know, the conventional avenues they don't tell us that, that you can change these things. And so I feel like I'm a message carrier in all of the work that I do, that I'm carrying this message of so much is possible for you. So much is possible for us. And uh, in the way of healing, in the way of finding ourselves, in the way of going deeper, in the way of clearing our vision, all on any, on any front. I think we've said so many great things just now and you have such an eloquent way of expressing them um i feel like you know because you hit on the 2020 right this is what everybody's like oh i want 2020 vision but what does that mean first of all right i mean we know it's a measurement in the eye chart but i love how you talked about how your vision just got so much richer and changed on on so many levels and that was my experience too and sometimes we have to have we have to be strong in our beliefs because the outside world is most likely going to ridicule us or like my parents were like, what are you thinking? This is not going to work. I don't know how, if you had any opposition or if everybody was very supportive of your, your, your efforts to improve your vision. I'm curious, did you, did you have to kind of fight for that? Like oftentimes I hear from partners, yeah, my partner doesn't believe in this, you know, or I, I, is that something that happened to you or not so much? Well, my husband used to wear glasses and now he doesn't. So yeah. I definitely have his support. <laughs> and um, hi, Dan, he's out there somewhere on yeah. YouTube. And, and um, I, I remember that my dad, when he was, I think he was sort of on the edge of glaucoma. And then he called me up and said, I want to, I want to learn from you. And I was shocked. That was really not in the ballpark. And uh, 
then he kind of backed out, actually. I think he got scared, didn't know if I was going to do some woo-woo stuff. And so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so and then, he, yeah, so we did, I didn't work with him. I didn't have a lot of direct opposition, but it's mostly my terror of being considered a flake or a crazy person. So I actually kind of kept it quiet. And, um, and then I'm a recovering perfectionist. And so I also was really scared of, of not succeeding, whatever success is with my clients. So that held me back. You know, it's a, it's an inner journey. All of this work is an inner journey. Yeah. And we, I love exactly what you're talking about, the inner journey and our own belief system. So even if you're not working with clients, but maybe you have this inner belief that it doesn't work for me because I am somehow different. And, you know, we probably, you probably also have clients that, you know, practice and practice and practice and sometimes even obsessively practice and they see no results. And you, all I can say is stop practicing, stop doing eye exercises, you know, <laughs> like, but you know what, you know what I mean? Because it's that, that's what we're here to talk about today. It's that inner, that, that inner level, the thoughts and the words that you use in your belief systems that can actually be the biggest, have one of the biggest impacts on your vision and not, you know, of course we know vision habits and all the things that we teach are important. So yeah, I, d I don't want to, I don't have exact questions to ask you, but I'm just curious how you got more into this kind of what I call inner game or mindset work, how you got more into that. Actually, I love talking with you so much, Claudia. <laughs> uh, I, I got into it by reading for first, I read a book by Carol Dweck, uh, called the fixed, uh, I think it's just called mindset. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> and I read it because I was a violin Suzuki teacher. And in my training, we had to pick a book and read it quickly and give a book report within two days. And so I picked a different book. My daughter was doing the training at the same time. So she picked mindset and both books made such an impression on both of us. We gave our reports and then I picked up her book and I read it. Um, in, in more depth. And it teaches this, this, um, we, we are, there are two kind of different mindsets. One is where you kind of think, oh, if I can't do it now, I'll never get it. Like it's, it's fixed. It's, um, and then once you get there, you've arrived and whew, you're done. The other is the growth mindset that says that I, everything I'm doing is moving in this direction of expansion. And I just keep learning more and adding and making some mistakes and learning from those mistakes. And I mean, if you ask anybody like, really, which mindset do you want to live in? Everybody would go, well, the, the, the growth mindset, but we don't, that's not our default. I agree. I read that book and I was like, oh man, Yep. Oh man, I definitely have a fixed mindset. And then some areas where I'm like, oh, I have the growth mindset in this area, but in a lot of other areas, no, I totally, I was like, I realized that when I read that book, you know, in how many ways, like you said, I think our culture kind of trains us to, to kind of be more on that fixed mindset. You know, you're either talented or you're good at something or you're not, versus right. you can actually work at something or practice something and get better at it. So yeah. yeah. And I got to watch that in my kids. My older daughter, who was in this training with me, had um, I, I watched her practice violin. And when I was growing up on an instrument, I could I could get it instantly and then I would just build on that. But I watched her and she would be given a new skill by her teacher and she couldn't use she couldn't do it at first. And I would hear her just chipping away at it all week, every day. And I went oh my gosh, you can actually build skills from nothing. And I had not, I had not taken the risk to find that in myself until I saw it in her. So she was a great inspiration for me and really taught me. She modeled it for me. We learn a lot from our kids. That's true. <laughs> That's for sure. And if we don't, they tell us what we, what we need to be learning. So, so now there's more. So that's the, that's the mindset piece. Um, once I went into energy training, you know, in reconnective healing, we're, we're feeling, we're feeling the frequency of this, you know, the, the abundance of love, 
energy. I, you know, there's no way to put words to it without sounding woo woo, but you feel this life force. You learn to feel it and find it and, and, and work with the, these frequencies to expand them. And, and so I entered the world of energy. And now once I've, I've realized that our words and our thoughts affect the actual frequency at which we are um, functioning in our, in our physical vessels, that's going to affect everything about how we feel, what the state of our well-being is, and how we affect others around us, um, what we think we can do and can't do, our beliefs, our vibrations. So th that's when I really went into this, uh, this world of calibrating, taking the moment to calibrate and really feel, how does it feel to type this word or this sentence in my email? And, and I practiced first in emails, learning, I'd, I'd type something and I'd, I would recognize this feeling in myself of, Ugh. and then I go, okay, wait, and, okay. You know, I would like go, okay, like a homing device inside me, I would go, no, this is the way I want to say it. So I would erase that and I would, I would type it the way that was authentic, kind, and didn't bring up any past luggage. <laughs> and, um, and that was how I first began practicing in a very safe way. Like I would not even put the address in the, at the top of the email so that if I accidentally hit send, it wouldn't go anywhere. It is so interesting that you said, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was, okay. I went through a very horrific divorce many, many moons ago, over two decades ago. Oh. And, you know, you get attacked. And this is another example. I was like, you just want to fire back. And then you sit down, you're yeah. like, okay, how can I imagine this to be a neutral relationship with a client or somebody, you know, and you just rewrite from the most loving kind of yet firm Right. So you're not like bending over backwards, but, you know, right. so that was that was a kind of my way of um, practicing that. But I, I, I wanted to ask you something uh, interesting in your work, because, you know, we I think you have coaches, too. I have coaches that I work with that help me where I get coached. And yeah. I love it when a coach calls me out. Like I use I would say something like when I didn't get it right, like say, I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter if it's technology or some business or and I would be like, I'm so confused. And then he said, you know, every time you say, I'm so confused, I'm like, you're right. Instead of saying, you know, I'm not very clear on this yet. Can you help me clarify this yeah. point or something? You know, it's a, it's just a subtle tweak. So you're not pretending that you know all the answers, but instead of the default was for me to say, I'm confused. So, so give us maybe some examples and connect it to eyesight. Like, what is it like with bad or not bad, negative thoughts or words that we even is that first of all is there a difference between what we think and what we say loud or is that kind of is there no difference that's a good question you know we have different levels of thinking we have the automatic thoughts that just flit through and if we aren't conscious then those kind of rule us but if we actually hear one then now it moves into the conscious area and it's unfortunately the unconscious ones that really rule us, but we can only start with the ones we're conscious of, right? So yes, my unconscious thoughts affect my well-being and, and my eyesight is part of my well-being, right? You and I talked in, the, in our prep, uh, kind of, kind of getting, coming together and when Claudia, I'm just telling everybody else, when Claudia and I come together, we cannot stop talking. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and so it was really hard to contain ourselves within a certain time amount. But um, we talked about, uh, now I've lost his name again, the man who wrote the um, the book on the craniosacral and uh, the vague. Oh, the, the, um, oh my God! Now I lost this. Uh, yeah, he lost it too. I was going to have it with me. No, 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 no. We'll find it anyway, and and Claudia can put it in the in the notes um, below. Yeah. When we find it, um, and actually the page number. Stanley so, Rosenberg. Stanley Rosenberg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so, so right, that's it. That's it. 
So in, um, when, in our training in natural vision improvement, we're all taught about the whole optic nerve, um, the, the whole vision complex from the eyes all the way back through the, the visual, um, everything that comes down and the, the optic nerve ends up at, the, at C2, the cerv second cervical vertebrae. And right above that is C1. So this, um, this book, on, I can't give you the page number right now, he says that he, he would get himself in alignment and with his, his uh, vagus nerve toned and everything in balance and functioning properly. And then he experimented with thinking a negative thought. He would think of something that made him very uncomfortable. And then he had his students come feel his, his spine and inevitably C1 had gone out of adjustment. So if C1 or C2 are out of adjustment, and if there's compression or tension there, then our eyesight is not going to, it, it, I'll say it this way, it, it can compromise the vitality of our eyesight. And when we, if he showed that he as a professor, as a teacher of this, of this work, could throw his C1 off by thinking of something that gave him discomfort, then I thought, whoa, imagine what that says about me. <laughs> my, you know, in the mire of my day, this, this plethora of negative thoughts of discouraged moments or what am I going to do now or I feel overwhelmed going through my mind. What am I doing to my, my whole system and specifically my eyesight? So, um, did I even begin to answer the question you just asked me? Now I can't remember. You did. I think you did to try and find. I was looking for the book and I found that I put it in the Zoom chat. I tried okay. to put it in the YouTube chat and it was, it said I have too many characters, so I couldn't. The Amazon link was so long. Anyway, right. it's called assessing, uh, ex accessing the, no, assessing, exit. Sorry, I can't talk anymore. How do you say that with a C? Accessing the healing power of the vagus nerve um, from Stanley Rosenberg. Anyway, so that is such a fascinating story. I, I read that book, uh, not totally to the end, and I did not see that part. So that is incredible, right? I mean, we know that everything is connected, and especially the neck and the vision right. and the optic nerve, but then you can actually throw the, the body part out of alignment. It's an incredible story. Yeah. So now so, let's just all do a little a little experiment. Yeah. So close, close your eyes and um, think of something that just like makes you angry or irritated or annoyed or uncomfortable, scared, whatever unfun feeling you want to claim. It can be a person's face. It can be something that already happened. And just feel in your body what 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 sense uh what you sense you may feel feel it in your chest you may feel it in your shoulders or your neck you may feel it in your jaw um it could be the palms of your hands something that happens in your legs okay so now like cleanse the palate <sighs> take a breath shake it out so I'd love to just see in the chat or um, Claudia, do you want to tell me what you felt when you did it? Yeah, I can. And we can also, you people, you know, you guys can put it in the chat and we can read it. So I felt a tightness in my stomach and like in my solar plexus and a tightness in my chest. And also when you said the jaw, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what I felt tighten. Mm -hmm. Kind of a so great thing. Mm -hmm. And if we feel it in our jaw, you can almost guess that it's gone into all the muscles around the eyes. Yeah, I see chest and neck tightness, discomfort in my belly, chest tightness. Um, I don't see anything on YouTube. Nobody commented there. But yeah, definitely. Clear yeah. chest and throat. Okay. Yeah. So now that we've cleansed the palate and... Um, and, and it shows up differently for different people because we all have sort of different channels of how our energy flows personally. So now close your eyes again and think of something that just opens your heart, like playing with a kitten or, you know, one of the millions of cat videos on YouTube or a person that you love 
or a place that you love to go to or what it feels like to get in a, in a warm bathtub or to go swimming in a pool on a hot day. And just feel how that feels in your body. So now let's sort of split the screen and now go back to the other scene and feel what comes up with the irritation or the annoyance or the anger or the fear. And just play with the idea of melting the edge of the happy scene into the unhappy scene. Just like they're watercolor paintings and the, the colors are starting to run into each other across the line. And notice what's going on with your breathing. And now let's even add another image. Imagine that you're in this experiment, you're walking down um, like a hallway. And now you come to the end of the hallway, you open a door and there's this beautiful, open, bright scene in front of you, very inviting. And just breathe that in. And if you like, you can kind of take a snapshot of it in, inside yourself so that you can recall that if it feels good. And when I say picture, sometimes I know there are people who really can't, they, they aren't very adept at, at visualizing. So it's perfectly fine to just use your other senses or just imagine the experience of doing it. You don't have to be able to see the, the scene. You can put yourself in it in a different way. So whenever you're ready, just flutter your eyes, uh, flutter, flutter your eyelids open. And I'd love to know a little bit of what people experienced doing that. The, um... Now I don't know which ones are the, okay, cuddling my grandkids, my belly gurgled. I mean, I can spare, I noticed in the positive scene that my, before I was like holding my breath and now I was like breathing deeply and my, my, I smiled a little bit. Like, you know, I just felt like overall very excited. Yeah. And, um, let's see what other people have to say. Um, so far, I don't see anything in the chat in terms of the, I felt calmer and the fluttering of my heart slowed. Yeah, interesting. I felt a little bit more of a deeper breathing before I didn't feel any breath. It was almost like I was not breathing in the negative one. So interesting. Um, when I imagined the the Blair person, <laughs> my breath was short yeah, and tight. Okay. I can't see my breath was full and deep. That's exactly what I experienced too, for sure. Yeah. It made you made uh Kathy said it made her smile. The open door takes me out into nature. Yeah. Chest openness, deeper breathing, smile. Yep. When I try to merge my happy feeling into the negative thoughts, it was as if I was dissolving my negative thoughts. That's what somebody said here too. I felt the same way. It was kind of like, you know, when you have like water on a on a one of those kitchen paper towels, but it's not the ones that absorb everything, but it just flows and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, right. you have water and it just floods the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like wonderful. Mm -hmm, so, right. And I want to interject here that it's not, I don't, I don't ever want to give the message that a negative thought is a bad thing and a mm -hmm. positive thought is a good thing because I mean, I grew up the epitome of the trying hard to be the good girl mm -hmm. role and, and, and that's paralyzing and it's not, it's not, I can tell you it's not healthy. So it's it's actually our ability here's here so so 
uh, I guess the spoiler is that there are lots and lots of ways to turn to the positive, but the biggest positive is to own it, to have the the experience in ourselves to be able to now you can look back on that and say oh I I began to dissolve a negative feeling so if I feel frightened or if I feel tense or if I feel worried or if I feel angry I actually do have a skill in fact I probably have a whole toolbox of skills that I can use so there is this moment when we go do I want to be in the fixed mindset or do I want to be in the growth mindset um, some teachers call it assigning meaning. So can I find the meaning for myself and say, this feels um, like I can feel myself wanting to hold on to this anger. And by becoming conscious of it, I'm now not a victim of the anger, in a sense. I'm not letting myself go in, you know, and, and losing myself to the anger, now I'm giving myself the choice. And it's okay if you end up just spouting and doing the angry thing. But also then, can I, can I learn from it? Can I say, you know, I had that moment. How interesting. Curiosity is a great thing. How interesting. What made me choose to dive deeper into the, into the anger? instead of know, knowing full well that I could have dissolved it, I could have turned a different way, literally turned my cheek and chosen something different. What made me want that? And then that's part of our own path. That's different for everybody. So um, I, I have so many questions for you. Um, I have one of them is, so those negative thoughts, and I love that you said they're not always bad. I mean, it's part of life. It's part of our experience right. that we have these, that it's not always rosy. Uh, um, but how can we, how, how does this, uh, for instance, I give examples, which you probably all said and heard, like with vision, for instance, I am blind like a bat. I can't see anything with my, I'm blind without my glasses. I hear that all the time. And I look at people's prescription and they have like a minus one or something. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. you, you're so blind. You can't see me. Oh, no, 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 I can see you. But you know, it's like, that's just a typical example that probably a lot of people have said that I have said. Um, so can you speak a little bit about how when we say these things or, or like, for instance, let's say as an, another example, let's say, um, you know, where we, where we own, like I have, a, I have a cataract or I, you know, where it's almost like we identify with our diseases to the point they're part of our personality. It's almost like we're married to the diseases. So um, maybe that's a different thing, but it's still, the, it's still the thoughts that keep repeating yes. some, okay. Share a little bit about, um, first of all, how we can shift that other than being aware with the consciousness is the other things, how to recognize yourself you know, I had a coach tell me about the confused thing. I probably would have never recognized this because right. it's, so, it's so, it's just a habit of saying that thing, right? So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a wonderful question. Very rich. So, yeah, I'd like, um, if I could use cancer as an example, okay. someone who says, I'm, um, I'm a cancer patient or I'm a cancer survivor, as opposed to someone who says, and there's a very different energy in somebody who says my body has been diagnosed with having um, th having certain cells growing in it. You know, we always have to remember that the word was, especially diagnoses, were invented to to um, describe th uh, functions that are happening in the body or symptoms that are appearing in the body. So the word, we're the one empowering the word, when the word is actually just a description to begin with of what's happening. Cancer cells have a hard um, exterior, like the cancer, the crab. So that's, that's where it came from. So it's just a description. And just like in vision, um, here it is, I have the, um, this incredibly, insightful, uh, what an interesting word that is, insightful article yeah. by Mar Martin Brofman. Remember this vision as a metaphor. And, and he goes through not only all of the 
maladies that can happen or, or difficulties that can happen visually, um, you know, with nearsightedness and farsightedness and astigmatism. Um, but he also has books out on every single part of the body and what every single part of the body is connected to in terms of our thoughts and in terms of how we're empowering. So if you think of one person whose tension plays out in respiratory distress as asthma, another person whose plays out like mine um, growing up was is, um, most of my life has been with digestive distress. Some people have heart trouble. Some people have arthritis. That it's it's inflammation or energy getting stuck in a different system of the body, right? But it, but what we're talking about is simply imbalance. So this is the key piece that I want to bring today, which is, I'll use the example of my perfectionism. When I first really identified how incredibly paralyzing and, um, and burdensome my whole history of perfectionism was, I thought, well, you know, I've got to, I've got to rid myself of this. Well, first of all, you can't rid yourself of perfectionism. And so that was a perfectionistic thought, you know, wipe it out. And then I said about, it's like perfectionism is a hammer. It's one hammer and you use it for everything. Well, I said about using my hammer to get rid of my perfectionism. Like double, I double did it, the same thing that I'd always done to the thing I was trying to get rid of. We only <laughs> use the tool that we're used to using, right? So if I am angry at someone, it's not going to be any do any good for me to get angry at myself for getting angry at that person. Because now I'm using the same thing. I'm just reinforcing that frequency. So what I want to do instead is like the become the witness it's like the meditation of life we come into this place of observing and in observing it now i'm not participating in it i'm witnessing it and what i have found for myself is that it's always that there was some part of me that that got pinched off is 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 the best way i can think of or constricted so it it kind of became its own little portion of me it hasn't been nourished it doesn't have a lot of skill and i i cut it off because it probably happened a long time ago whatever it was even if it was tiny um one one example i have from my own history is i had a second grade teacher who uh I was sitting in class one day and we all were sitting at our desks and she had probably had just asked us all to be quiet and we all got quiet eventually and then she said this child and this child are my good little girls and it wasn't me it was two other girls i still know them and they're dear friends of mine actually so and incidentally, they were the first two children to get classes in the class. Mm, interesting. They sat still. They folded their hands they, and put them on their desks. They didn't look to the right or the left. They didn't, you know, they just did exactly what the teacher said, and they were still and quiet as mice. Those were her good girls. And I, I mean, it just was like my heart closed up. I want to be her good girl. That was what went through me. So... A few years ago, I was in a workshop and they had us pick a moment in our lives where we respond differently. And we can respond as our grown up self. So I went back to that moment and I replayed it. And there's me, my second grade self, sitting at the desk. And there's my grown up self standing next to my young self saying, You have, saying to the teacher, you have no idea what a good person Carla is. Well, Claudia, in that moment, the entire left side of my vision field opened and I suddenly remembered, it had been 60 years since that scene had happened, I suddenly remembered that the whole left bank of our wall was windows. But in my memory, all those six decades, five and a half decades, 
I had pictured a solid dark wall. I pictured the thing happening in a small room. That was a magnificent example of how it affects our vision. That room That's became incredible. That is an incredible experience. Wow. And within two years, I was wearing glasses because what I began to do was I began to imitate those two girls. Mm -hmm. I sat still, I folded my hands, I kept my mouth shut. And what happened? I got stomach aches and more stomach aches and more stomach aches, and I got glasses. I became nearsighted. That is and so I, fascinating. And I'm sure so many other people can relate to your story in one way or another, right? Where we just we just wanted to be the good girl. We just wanted to be accepted and loved. And yeah. we, we tried everything. We tried everything to get there. And uh, wow, that is so powerful what you described, just the habits. And we had one of our students in the Clear Vision Club, and she's not on here today, but she explained a similar story exactly with the movement, how she got the glasses when she started sitting. Oh, no, it was the other way. She got glasses and then she stopped moving. So yeah. that was, you know, way, of course, made it worse. So that is such an interesting story. Okay, so, wow. Yeah, so these things, these little things. I mean, that was one sentence that my second grade teacher said one day. That was it. And it affected the whole rest of my life. And you never know what little things happened to us that really affected us. Also, there is a tapping uh, specialist who works specifically with uh, war veterans, with, with PTSD victims from both that she's worked with Vietnam War veterans and then the um, veterans since then. And what she has determined is that anyone that is paralyzed with PTSD after battle, after a war experience, in, in her case, in her experience, 100% of them were actually replaying a childhood trauma. So they ended up identifying the childhood trauma and then tapping on that. And that relieved the war PTSD. Because, wow, that's incredible. because the thing that happened during the war was replaying something that had happened mm -hmm. so long ago before they could process it. So we're all carrying these little things. And I, I sometimes use this image when I'm teaching people. Imagine you're learning how to walk and, um, and you're not very skilled and you um, run into the coffee table because all of us had, you know, some short table there and then we bruised ourselves somewhere, right? And it hurts. And so these, what we're talking about here are the inner bruises. So imagine if when you bump into the coffee table, your parents put foam rubber on you to protect you, that part of you from the coffee table. But now next time you bump your elbow. So then they put foam rubber on your elbow. And then the next time you bump your head as you're walking through, you know, getting into the car. So then they put foam rubber on your head that, that were sort of the, the um, close the barn door after the horse gets out, right? Uh -huh, yeah. We are all encased inside. We are walking encasements of foam rubber around old injuries. And so the when we have these negative responses to things in our outer world, then it's simply telling us that that negativity was in me. It's already been in me. I get to see it now. And it's some part of me asking to join the rest of me. So it's a, it's a deeply healing experience to be able to bring these things into the light and so many visual images, right? It's just so rich for our vision. And then we breathe easier because we, cl we reclaim that part of ourselves. You, you, I was not a bad girl when I was eight years old, so I can reclaim that part of myself. She was just, she felt, in, you know, bet like betrayed by her teacher or, or abandoned or um, maybe even uh, put down, you know, mm -hmm. insulted. So those things happen so many countless times when we're young and using things like these visualizations, reenacting, uh, Mary Morrissey calls it, um, it's from Neville Goddard, the pruning shears of revision, where we simply cut that part of the tape out and we insert how we would have liked it to go. And oh then God, we- Oh God, that's so beautiful. I love that. Oh, that's then, a great- it, yeah, it's so empowering because then the next time I am, encounter something of that, that that's related to that, I respond differently. 
because I changed it in me. So I put together, um, uh, I just collected a few quotes from a couple of different, you know, significant people for me, Joe Dispenza and Jacob Lieberman. And, um, and Joe Dispenza's, uh, two of his, you can't think greater than you feel. So our thoughts cannot exceed the, the vibration or quality of our, of our feelings. So how we feel is how we're going to think. Can, and you, can you pause for a moment? Can you pause for a moment? I just want to, because that makes, because it, right, we talk about affirmations and we talk about, you know, I use them in my work too and, and positive thinking. However, if you don't connect that with that feeling or if you don't feel that feeling first, it's just, then it's just like something, it's just, just meaningless words. Right? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, and that's exactly what we're talking about here too, is that the words that just come out of us are the words that actually resonate for us. Right? So now they're a clue as to what's really going on in here and in, in here. And so then we have the chance of actually looking at it and making a, a new choice or keeping it if we decide we want to keep it. Um, Joe also says, if there are things we don't like within the world, we should first look to see if any of that is within us, that the first change we can make is within us. And the most spot on one is we don't perceive things the way they are, we perceive things the way we are. And that is amazing. We, yeah. we need to put them into the chat or the show notes, those quotes. I don't know if you have them copy and paste that's really amazing we perceive the world can you say that again because i think that was really good we don't we perceive things the way they are uh, in fact I'll, I'll put an emphasis we don't perceive things the way they are we perceive things the way we are you know that's interesting it reminds me of dr bates's quote how um and i don't know that verbatim right now but basically the the image that the retin like what we perceive is not the image that the retina receives it's our own interpretation of yeah. you know but he didn't put that how we are he didn't put the state of being or the feelings in there Bates was not about feelings really right. I mean, <laughs> right. relaxation and you know being able to imagine but he did he had a lot of the Bates method is about the mind I would say 90 percent of the Bates method is really about the mindset and imagining and connecting to that relaxation and ease and effortlessness so he just didn't you know, I, I think and at the end, a lot of these things, all, all these pieces fit together. It, it's yeah. just different ways of saying it and different methodologies of accomplishing that. And so that's beautiful. Thank you so much. What Was there another quote that you wanted to share? Yeah. Um, Jacob Lieberman has done a lot of things with a lot of work with colors mm -hmm. and, um, and corresponding to the uh, chakras, I think. So he said, I saw that the colors which are frequencies of energy that people are unreceptive to possess the same energetic makeup as their unresolved past experiences. And the good news is anything that's unresolved, once it comes into the light, we can do something about it. We can, we can, ex we can bring ourselves to a place of of joining ourselves. I like, I just love that word joining. Like I want to join, or I want to ask that part of myself to rejoin me. So I actually gain from it. I actually gain from the negative that comes. I learn something from it. I, that's so, I mean, it's, it's so interesting to me because they even talk, you know, in business books, they talk about how failing is super important because without failing, you're not going to grow. And that's part of the growth mindset, right? You you fail often to succeed, but it's always, it always sounds so good. And then you fail and you're like, oh, I don't like this failing part. <laughs> so no. I think it's it really good. The, the idea that we can recognize something and be non-attached and be the observer, like what you said earlier, be the observer. And how can we not, you know, I, I don't, I don't find the right words not take it not personally like how can we see that as just some event that happened that flows through us that we can now make conscious choices about how we respond and how we proceed so yeah you can actually say it as a sentence you can say oh i encountered that in the room that moved through me or i moved through that there's yeah. a there's an app called curable 
that I really recommend to people. It's uh, it came from a person who had lived through chronic pain for years and then learned more and more about the bra how the brain uses pain as a warning system, that it's no longer the, the injury itself. It's actually the brain's set of defenses telling us that's dangerous, that's dangerous, but the boundaries keep moving farther and farther out so you're just in this prison of of what you've set up to protect yourself. And Curable teaches so many skills about how to turn these things back around and just say them differently. Um, instead of saying, I have a stabbing pain in my back, which now automatically, now you picture a knife in your back, right? Right, right. <laughs> that reinforces the pain in your back if you have one. Um, but if you say, my back isn't as comfortable as I would like it, now you've conjured up the thing you want. So we can play with how we say things and, and just turn toward, turn in the direction of what we want and see how we can phrase things in that direction. Even if we're not there yet, it's, it's making that come more alive for us than the thing that we don't want. Yeah, that aligns with the secret, you know, that whole thing yes. also that you can't like the double negative, it doesn't recognize that. Or it's yeah. interesting, it sounds like it's almost like we all have to learn a new language, really. We all have to learn a new language because we are, I feel like majority, right, of people that you surround yourself with. And I, you know, we, we can't get so sidetracked, but you know, the five people that closest five friends and how that makes a huge impact, right? Like how you how you change and how you feel. And um, yeah, it's it's so fascinating to recognize that. And and I wish sometimes we would tell each other, we wouldn't be afraid to tell someone, you know, like that coach told me, you always say, I'm so confused, um, you know, like, but without getting offended, be like, oh yeah, thank you. Actually, that is helpful for me to know. I didn't recognize that. So anyway, we, we have to come to a close. I want to make sure we answer any questions that, or is there anything that you wanted to share that we didn't hit? Because like you said, we can go for hours. We can go for hours, Claudia. I would love to, because so much, um, when I'm working with a group, I almost always bring in a song. I'd love to okay, yes, yes. A song before we close, but are there any questions that want to uh, I will look. Um, I don't really see, I see more great comments. I don't really see, at least on YouTube, I don't see any uh questions let's see um i think that there was a lot of great comments here i don't really see or experiences that people have shared um yeah i don't see any questions so go ahead uh play the song all right I'm, so I'm gonna highlight i'm gonna hide my image so we can see you okay. in full beauty <laughs> uh this is a song that i wrote that actually it's the, I've been writing songs since I was a teenager, but this song took me decades to finish because I hadn't gotten to what the song was about or how to, how to uh, redeem it in the end. Um, and finally, about six years ago, um, I, it came. And so um, I am, I don't have a formal recording of this right now. It's on, um, I'm in the studio, I just recorded it last week, but it won't be out for a while. So the song is called Something, and it's really the story of these, these foam rubber parts of ourselves, or these foam rubber wrapped parts of ourselves that, that um, have been inside of us, and yet the, the life force and, and the whatever it is that we need has been there all along. So the song is called Something. We're losing the sound, Carla. The sound in an hour. Uh, are you muted, Claudia? No, I was muted, but the sound was going in and out for a second. All right, let me check it. Oh, I wonder if it's uh, it's probably because of YouTube, not just Zoom. That I don't think so. I don't think so. No? Okay, mm -hmm. I've got everything set up in my settings appropriately. Okay, let's try it again. Yeah, I'm sorry. I hope it isn't too distorted then. Let's try it again. I hope so too. Otherwise, we have to link uh, to the recording or something. Yeah, or... yeah. Okay. Let's try it again. All right. I'll turn down my mic a tiny bit. Other people say it was fine for them. So maybe for me, it was bad. Okay, then I'm not going to say anything. All right. Okay.
What's wrong with my sound? I could basically oh, so not sorry, sing. <laughs> Everybody's oh, like, it's amazing. I will have to watch the recording. We'll have to watch the recording. I don't know. I'm on Ethernet, not on Wi-Fi. And that's probably I don't know. It's I didn't hear anything. So yeah. I'm glad it worked. I'm so happy that was just me and not everybody else. So thank you yeah. so much. Absolutely. You know, that's something, you know, that's in all of us. We all have it. It's all of us. So yeah. Well. 
Yes, I'm so touched. Um, how do people, like if people want to work with you or get in touch with you or what kind of, in what capacity can they connect with you or work with you or what 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 do you have to like share? <laughs> I, I this is how I work basically, just um, kind of walking through the clues that come up with a client. And I also teach some classes, not specifically just in vision, um, more about kind of overcoming whatever the overcoming is, or creating a vision for ourselves and moving in that direction, because um, I also do coaching. So um, I, my, my website is doorwaytohealing.com. Lots yeah, of doorways. It's, all underneath, it's all underneath also yeah. in the YouTube yeah. description, yes, okay. And I have a, a long course coming up, probably start at the end of August. And I have a very short course that I'm hoping to fit in before the end of August. So. And what kind of course is that? Uh, the short one is going to be, it kind of came up after the Roe versus Wade uh, turning a few weeks ago. I just, I saw so many people just reeling from this kind of uh, domino effect of, of um, things changing and people feeling overwhelmed. So I put a very quick course together in just how to keep finding the peace within yourself so that you can take action and mobilize what you have to give to the world. And um, the long course is- so, Hold on, hold on a second. So I think this is important because I hear that all the time. How can I relax? How can I function with all this stuff going on in the world? Ukraine, like right. all the terror that happens. Exactly. And so I think this, this has nothing to do with Roe versus Wade. So the, your point you're making is that we are on changes and scary things are happening in the world and how can we right, come back to our own true self and our true power and doesn't mean that we don't care. I mean, that's how I would interpret it. It doesn't mean that we don't care about the things happening in the world. That, but we, yeah, okay. So yeah, that's- we have, we have support. We have to support each other in that, in coming into this center because where's our strength? It's in here. Our strength is not what happens when we get pulled out and when we're angry and railing against something. Our strength is when we're in in this quiet place inside that knows that there's something better. So how do we come to that back to that place? Yeah. And restore and it. The other one and that is okay. The other, the other one that is my I, I have a combination dream builder uh program that you create a vision and and we walk through the steps of bringing this into your life, into reality, and into form. And I combine it with a, an ancient Jewish tradition of study called Musar study that brings soul traits in to support each of the steps of the of the Dream Builder program. That sounds amazing. I want to do that on the <laughs> I just I love, I just love it. Every class at the end, I'm I'm just, I feel so full in my heart, so. And that's done on Zoom, that's online, right? It's everything not, it's, is on Zoom, yeah. For yeah, the time wonderful. being, everything's on Zoom, right? Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so people can find you on your website, they can connect with you. Um, yes. it, you know, I think what you talk about is so, again, we could keep going. Um, and we have to come to a close. I'm looking at the time. Oh, no. Um, but I think it's, I, I find it sometimes when I, just to close this off, um, we know when I do consultations and um, a lot of times when people like when I talk to people who are what we call press biopic, they don't have glasses yet, but they, you know, their nose is that near vision. They're very like, I, I want to do whatever it takes, you know, and they have a very clear vision for their life and they're excited about their life and they, they know that their vision is going to be a problem if they don't, you know, get this sorted out, so to speak. And then there's people that I'm like talking to that have more like maybe nearsighted, more higher diopters. And I'm like, and they're like, it would be nice not to have glass. I'm like, well, nice is not going to give you momentum to make changes, right? Nice to have. Lots of things are nice to have. And I find when you talk about the dream builder and having a life vision or having a vision, I find that sometimes when that is lacking or when there is no strong connection, yeah. then nobody will, like, then you don't do vision improvement because then, like, that seems like too much work or whatever the excuse yeah. is. So I, did you, do you find that as well? I mean, I always, I'm always blown away by some people yeah. being very clear on what they want and why their vision is important to them. I want to swim without glass. Like, I'm surfing. Like to me, this yeah. is like, you know, my life and other people are like, hmm, that wouldn't, which would be less, con it would be a little bit more convenient, but right. not really a big deal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And actually in the dream builder program, people could pick their vision as, as the vision, like improving their eyesight. Could oh, I see. Be 
um, what they work toward. So super cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we have to come to a close here on YouTube. Um, you. and yeah. this was thank you everybody out in YouTube land. Yeah, connect with Carla. She's amazing. And um, you know, maybe I'm in her next course. And you can find me also, all the links are below in the show notes, all Carla's websites are in there and also her bio. And so this was fun. And I see everybody next week, uh, next Wednesday for Clear Vision Wednesday. Bye.